आकाशवाणी प्रेजेंट्स मॉर्निंग न्यूज गुड मॉर्निंग आई एम सायरा मुश्तबा द हेडलाइंस कैंपेनिंग रीचेज इट्स पीक फॉर फर्स्ट फेज ऑफ असेंबली इलेक्शन इन झारखंड सीनियर बीजेपी लीडर एंड प्राइम मिनिस्टर नरेंद्र मोदी टू एड्रेस टू रैलीज एंड होल्ड रोड शो इन द स्टेट टूडे बीजेपी एंड महाविकास अघाड़ी टू रिलीज द मैनिफेस्टो फॉर महाराष्ट्र असेंबली पोल्स इन मुंबई टूडे सेवन इंडियन इंस्टीट्यूशन मेक इट टू टॉप हंड्रेड ऑफ क्यू एस वर्ल्ड यूनिवर्सिटी रैंकिंग एशिया टू थाउजेंड ट्वेंटी फाइव आई आई टी डेली सिक्योर्स फोर्टी फोर्थ रैंक कैनेडा एंड फास्ट ट्रैक वीजा प्रोग्राम फॉर स्टूडेंट्स फ्रॉम फोर्टीन कंट्रीज इंक्लूडिंग इंडिया इंडियन एथलीट्स बैक थ्री ब्रॉन्स मेडल्स एट सीनियर एशियन जूडो ओपन इन हांगकॉन्ग And in table tennis, India's Cinderella Das clinches under 15 girls singles title at WTT Youth Contender in Italy. And now the news in detail. In Jharkhand, campaigning has reached its peak for the first phase of assembly elections. Star campaigners of both NDA and India Bloc are leaving no stone unturned to woo the voters. Senior BJP leader and Prime Minister Narendra Modi will address two rallies and will hold a road show in Jharkhand today. More from our correspondent. The first election meeting of Prime Minister Narendra Modi will be held at Chandipur Football Ground in Chandan Kiari Assembly constituency in Bukaro at 1 p.m. While the second election rally will be at Aerodrome Ground in Gadwa at 3:15 p.m. The Prime Minister will also hold road show in Ranchi at 5:15 p.m. Senior JMM leader Hemant Soren will address a series of meeting at Bhavnathpur, Tamar and Khijri. While senior RJD leader Tejasvi Yadav will address people at Hunter Ganj in Chatra. Madhya Pradesh Chief Minister Mr. Mohan Yadav will hold three election meetings at Sarath, Deoghar, and Poriya Ghat. Senior BJP leader and Union Minister Shivraj Singh Chauhan will address election campaign. BJP Jharkhand election co in charge Hemant Biswa Sharma will address public meetings at Chatra and Latihar. With K K Lal, Sanjeev Sharma, Akashwani News, Ranchi. Leaders of the AJSU and left parties will also address rallies in different parts of Jharkhand. Elections to the 81 member assembly will be held in two phases. on the 13th and the 20th of this month while counting will take place on the 23rd of november in our series of constituency profiles today we take a look at tamar assembly seat in ranchi district of jharkhand tamar will go to polls in the first phase on the 13th of this month more from our correspondent under the seat sharing arrangement of the nda the tamar seat has been allocated to janata dal united with gopal krishna patar contesting from this constituency this seat is reserved for scheduled tribes jdu has won from tamar seat twice while ajsu has held it once in the 2009 by elections gopal krishna patar defeated the then chief minister shibu soren the jmm has fielded vikas kumar munda the sitting mla for this seat although there are 18 candidates including 10 independents the primary contest is between Gopal Krishna Patar of JDU and Vikas Kumar Munda of JMM key issues in this constituency include unemployment scarcity of drinking water and inadequate electricity supply with KK Lal from Ranchi Manik Sharma Akashwani News Delhi The ruling Bharatiya Janata Party and the opposition Mahavikas Aghadi will release the manifestos for Maharashtra Assembly elections today Campaigning has intensified and prominent leaders are canvassing across the state to garner support for their candidates. More details from our correspondent. Union Home Minister and Senior BJP Leader Amit Shah will launch the Bharatiya Janata Party's Sankalp Patra or Manifesto for the upcoming Maharashtra Assembly elections today. Prominent leaders of the BJP are expected to be present at the launch. Mr. Shah will also address three public rallies in North Maharashtra and Vidarbha region in Jalgaon, Bulhana and Amravati in favor of Mahayuti candidates. Union Minister Nitin Gadkari will be addressing public meetings in Nagpur and Yavatmal. Deputy Chief Minister and BJP Leader Devendra Fadnavis will be campaigning in Mumbai Amravati and Nagpur. On the other hand, opposition Mahavikas Aghadi coalition will also release the manifesto for Maharashtra Assembly elections today. Congress President Mallikarjun Kharge will release the manifesto. According to reports, Congress General Secretary K C Venugopal, Maharashtra Congress in charge Ramesh Chennithala, Maharashtra Congress President Nana Patole, Congress Legislature Party Leader Bala Sahab Thorat, NCP SP President Jayant Patil, Mumbai Congress President Varsha Gaikwad, Shiv Sena UBT Leader Sanjay Raut and other MVA leaders will be present on this 
occasion. Meanwhile, NCP SP Chief Sharad Pawar will be canvassing in Jalna and Ahmednagar in favor of MVA candidates. Prarthana Akashwani News, Mumbai. The government has procured over 120 lakh metric tons LMT paddy in Kharif marketing season or KMS 2024-25 till Friday and has benefited 6.58 lakh farmers in Punjab with a minimum support price value of 27,995 crore rupees. The Ministry of Consumer Affairs, Food and Public Distribution said that the paddy is being purchased at MSP of 2,320 rupees per quintal as decided by the government for Grade A paddy. Seven Indian institutions have secured a place in the top 100 of the QS World University Rankings Asia 2025. India is home to two universities in the top 50 and seven in the top 100, with the Indian Institute of Technology, IIT Delhi, leading at 44th place. In a statement, Education Ministry said that this edition highlights India's impressive upward trajectory in higher education across the continent. IIT Bombay is ranked 48th, while IIT Madras, IIT Kharagpur, IIT Kanpur and University of Delhi are the other Indian institutes in the top 100, showcasing India's robust academic standing. Institutions such as IIT Guwahati, IIT Roorkee, Jawaharlal Nehru University, Chandigarh University, UPES and Vellore Institute of Technology are in the top 150. This ranking assesses 984 institutions across 25 countries in Eastern, Southern, Southeastern and Central Asia. Talking to Akashwani News, educationist Dr. Sant Kumar Chaudhary said, India stands out with the highest number of institutes in the latest rankings, showcasing a diverse array of both emerging and well-established universities. Our honor, all Indian citizens, to see that U.S. World University ranking shows Asia 2025 that our institute, more than seven numbers, has come within 100. Matter of pride, our honorable prime minister always conveying that our quality education should be given to the students. So our students who are willing to go to abroad, now they will feel comfortable in our own country. This is Akashwani giving you the news. For quick news updates round the clock, follow us on our X handle at AIR News Alerts. And for details of stories and more, log on to our website www.newsonair.gov.in and download the News on AIR app. Welcome back. You're listening to Morning News. In the 83rd annual session of the Indian Roads Congress, various aspects related to road construction are being discussed. The convention is being held in Raipur, the capital of Chhattisgarh. About 2,000 experts, engineers and scientists are participating in this four-day session, which will conclude tomorrow. More from our correspondent. In the annual session of the Indian Road Congress, road safety, development of roads in rural areas and technological development in the field of road construction during the last one year are not only being discussed, but it is also being displayed through an exhibition at the venue. General Secretary of Indian Road Congress, Sanjay Kumar Nirmal said that in India, now efforts are being made to use waste and locally available materials as much as possible in the road sector so that it promotes green construction and circular economy. Vikal Shukla, Akashwani News, Raipur. In Jammu and Kashmir, one terrorist was killed in an encounter with security forces in Sopur town of Baramula district yesterday, while two to three other terrorists are still trapped there. Officials said a fierce gunfight broke out between the security forces and the terrorists in the Rampura locality of Sopur yesterday evening. In Pakistan, at least 25 people were killed and about 50 injured in a bomb blast at a railway station in Baluchistan province yesterday. The blast occurred at the platform when a popular train was about to leave Quetta station for Peshawar. A separatist militant group, Baluchistan Liberation Army or BLA, has claimed the responsibility for the suicide attack. The BLA said they targeted a Pakistan military unit that was returning from Quetta after completing a training course. In a significant development having far-reaching implications on Indian students, Canada has announced the discontinuation of its Student Direct Stream or SDS visa program. The SDS is a key pathway for international students seeking permits for studies. It is said that the decision has come as part of the country's attempts to address the ongoing housing shortages and resource strain. 
The SDS program was launched in 2018 by Immigration, Refugees and Citizenship Canada, IRCC. It was designed to fast-track study permit applications for students from 14 countries. These nations include India, Brazil, China, Colombia, Costa Rica, Morocco, Pakistan, Peru, the Philippines and Vietnam. Under this program, the application process was faster, paving the way for quicker access to Canadian educational institutions. The International Film Festival of India, or IFI 2024, has announced the launch of IFIESTA, a vibrant entertainment extravaganza designed to bring communities together through the magic of films, food, art and interactive experiences. IFIESTA will be hosted at the Kala Academy, located in the picturesque waterfront of Panjim City in Goa, from the 21st to the 28th of November. In a statement, Ministry of Information and Broadcasting said that this cultural event will feature a wide array of attractions, offering visitors a chance to explore the vibrant diversity of Indian culture, food, music and cinema. In the world of sports, let's dive into the remarkable feats of our athletes and the thrilling matches that lie ahead. In table tennis, India's Cinderella Das has clinched the under-15 girls' singles title at the WTT Youth Contender in Lignano Sabiadora in Italy. She defeated compatriot Divyanshi Bhomik 3-2 in an All-Indian final last night. In judo, Indian athletes have backed three bronze medals at the Senior Asian Judo Open in Hong Kong. In the women's 48kg category, India's Angel Yadav triumphed over Law Wan Lok of the host country. In the men's 60kg category, India's Jadin defeated Habib Hassan of Kuwait to claim bronze, while Saurav won his bronze in the men's 73 kg event, beating Billet Erdena Sort of the USA. In cricket, India will take on South Africa in the second match of the four match T20 series in Khabeka, South Africa, this evening. The match is scheduled to begin at 8 30 pm IST. In hockey, the Women's Asian Champions Trophy 2024 will begin tomorrow at Rajgir in Bihar. Chief Minister Nidish Kumar will inaugurate the event. The championship will conclude on 20th of this month. Vishnu PS, Akashwani News, Delhi. India Meteorological Department, IMT, has forecast heavy rainfall with thunderstorms and lightning in Tamil Nadu today. Further, light to moderate rainfall is also expected in Kerala, Mahe, Puducherry and Karaikal today. The weather agency said that light to moderate rainfall with thunderstorms and lightning in these regions will continue till the 15th of this month. Air quality in Delhi NCR continues to be in the very poor category. According to the Central Pollution Control Board, CPCB, an air quality index or AQI of 337 was reported in the national capital at 7 in the morning. IMD has forecast that Delhi and NCR are likely to experience smog and shallow fog in the night and morning hours during the next two to three days. And now for a look at today's newspapers, it's over to Prashant Kumar Sinha. Thank you, Sarah. High voltage campaigning across Jharkhand and Maharashtra is widely covered by newspapers today. The Hindustan Times writes, in Maharashtra, Modi takes on Congress over divisive ploy. The pioneer quotes PM Modi in his top headline, Congress turns states into its ATMs. In Jharkhand's Kolhan, BJP banks on women, OBCs, JMM on tribals, writes the Sunday Express. The Hindu notes Team India will not play in Pakistan, BCCI tells ICC. Hindustan Times on its front page carries an interview with CJI D.Y. Chandrachud as he completes his tenure today. Judicial freedom doesn't mean orders go one way. The Asian Age reports Modi, Xi, Rio talks on cards as India, China rebuild ties. And finally, the Sunday Express writes about Anish Sarkar, the youngest ranked chess player, all of three Kolkata Child's journey to become youngest ranked chess player. And with that, it's back to you, Sarah. Thank you, Prashant. And now, before we end the bulletin, the headlines once again. Campaigning reaches its peak for first phase of assembly elections in Jharkhand. Senior BJP leader and Prime Minister Narendra Modi to address two rallies and hold roadshow in the state today. BJP and Mahavikas Aghari to release the manifesto for Maharashtra Assembly polls in Mumbai today. Seven Indian institutions make it to top 100 of QS World University Rankings Asia 2025. IIT Delhi secures 44th rank. Canada ends fast-track visa program for students from 14 countries including India. Indian athletes back three bronze medals at Senior Asian Judo Open in Hong Kong. And in table tennis, India Cinderella Das clinches under-15 girls singles title at WTT Youth Contender in Italy. 
For details of these stories and more, log on to our website www.newsonair.gov.in. And with that, we end the morning news. Have a great day.